everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and this is Lindy Stitches where I talk about cross stitch. I design cross stitch patterns under the name Lindy Stitches. They make people happy. You can see my work at lindystitches.com. Today's video is going to be all about my experience stitching the Mushroom and Fern Chatelaine by Martina Rosenberg. So I stitched this over the space of, I don't know, four years. <laughs> it is a massive piece of needlework with all different sorts of fibers in it, from silk to cotton to metallics. It has beads, it has specialty stitches. It is a whole smorgasbord of stitchy goodness. Now, I have hesitated on making this video many times because I have a lot of things I would like to discuss, but number one, I am not an expert on chatelaines, uh, not at all. So I am just going to give you the caveat that I am talking about my experience stitching this chatelaine. If I happen to say something that you experience chatelaine stitchers know and you need to correct me, just go ahead and do it in the comments. I will not be surprised at all. So if you don't know what chatelaines are, they are really fancy patterns by Martina Rosenberg, who owned her company, Chatelaine. And a lot of her patterns are mandalas, meaning they're repeating motifs around a central theme. She has a lot that are themed around cities like Vienna and Rome and springtime and winter and they are a visual delight. They are visually very delightful and I was never going to stitch one because I know how expensive I knew how expensive they were. Uh, a company called European Cross Stitch sells kits to kit up your chatelaine pattern and they are, I mean, you could go sell a kidney. You could. And it might be worth it. <laughs> okay, so I was never going to stitch one. Then I saw this one with the mushrooms and I was like, oh dear, oh dear. Um, the number one piece of advice I see on Chatelaine groups, and I will link the two that I was a part of during this experience down below if you'd like to join a group and find some stitchers that are stitching these, is you should start with a small one. Get your feet wet, use the different fibers, do some beading, and um, decide if you like stitching a Chatelaine. I didn't like any of the little ones. I just like this big honker. And so I went for it. Now, I would not consider myself a super experienced stitcher when it comes to stitching specialty stitches. Um, I think this was my first experience with silk. This was definitely my first experience with beading. And you know what? It went fine. So if you're interested in a big honker, I say just do it. What do you have to lose? It's just cross stitch and you definitely don't have to kit it up yourself. So here we go. I'll talk about the kitting process in a minute. A lot of this Chatelaines, it seems to me from the research I have done, do not specify. Quite a few of them give you the option, I will say, of doing 28 or 32 count fabric. Um, that's what Mushroom and, and Fern calls for, 28 or 32. Um, the only concern I saw with doing it on 32 is that your beads might get a little too crowded. Now, my fabric is 32 count stone gray Lugana. And there are areas where it's densely beaded. And I will say I never had that problem where I had to skip a bead because they were getting all smooshed together. Um, and I really wanted to do it on 32 because you can tell this is already enormous. And if I did it on 28, it would be even bigger. So I would say when it comes to your fabric choice, I wouldn't 
I mean, maybe linen. Maybe there's a little more concern with linen because it can get a little uneven with uh, the threads. But that was my experience with uh, the fabric. I decided to kit this up myself. <sighs> <laughs> If you enjoy kidding, I really enjoy kidding. I will say that. I really enjoy kidding and I really enjoy saving money. Two things which went into this choice. Um, if you don't enjoy kidding, just don't. Just go buy the kit off European Cross Stitch. If you do and you are also a little cheap, like myself, I would say just go, just go section by section. Or do what I did, look at the pattern way too often, look at other people's pictures of their stitching, figure out if they used the correct, you know, the they subbed out the materials, <laughs> used a cheaper material, uh, compared the DMC to the expensive fiber you don't want to buy. It was a lot of uh, figuring and shortcutting and uh, what can I say? For example, uh, the trees are supposed to be stitched in a silk. I don't remember which one, but you can see there's a lot of tree going on here. So I opted for an overdyed gassed cotton called walnut. Um, I didn't take, I mean, you can't really take shortcuts on metallics. Um, some threads, I did not know what they were. I didn't know what they were, and so I felt like I had to order it because what in the world is this? Um, I'm talking about this awful stuff. I think it's wonderful that these are such learning experiences because now I know that I absolutely hate Silk Pearl. Uh, this is a horrible product. <laughs> This is horrible, I hate stitching with it. Uh, it is like a tiny, 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 tiny spring made out of silk. And so it like has this extreme springiness to it. And getting it in your needle is a struggle. Stitching with it and getting it to lay nicely, especially when there's more silk pearl in the hole you're going in. I don't like this stuff. Now I know. Another fiber that was totally new to me is Silk Lame Braid, and I loved working with this product. I suppose it's probably used mostly in needlepoint. Um, it says needle points for light coverage on 18 count. Um, it's a silk that they have braided with some metallic. And I just really, really like the texture. I really like the texture. So it's silk, but it's got sparklies wound, I think on the outside of it. Really, really, really nice to stitch with. And it's not as sparkly, it's the, uh, it's the row above the sparkles, between the sparkles and the beads and it's also up here. Um, it's not as sparkly as the Petite Treasure Braid. But it's just really nice, it's like butter. Maybe it helped that I was stitching also with the color of butter. I like butter. Uh, I put some wool into this. I, um, yeah, so thread by thread, I kind of made my choices. Um, Pictures of other people's example, their finished products are priceless when it comes to choosing colors and making different decisions. Um, another fiber that I had never stitched with before, and I love it, and I would love to find another use for this in my designing, is the Karen Wild Wildflowers. It is really, really wonderful. Um, it is, oh, what the heck is this stuff called? It's pearl cotton. But the wildflowers are, is all the background grass. 
and also these leaf stalks, which this is all one color. Leaf stalks? <laughs> I don't know what these are. Whirly gigs? This is all one thread, and it's just so beautiful how it transitions from one color to another. Really wonderful. Uh, I did end up buying the bead pack from European Cross Stitch, and the bead packs aren't very expensive as far as, you know, kitting up beads. That's not fun. I don't want to do that. I bought the PDF pattern and I have read plenty of comments in the groups that people have bought the paper chart and not they're not able to enlarge it or read it very well. I don't know if this would apply to all the Chatelaine charts or it's just specific charts that people struggle with, but a lot of people seem to end up resorting to just buying the PDF so that they can enlarge it. Okay. So I am going to say some negative things in this video. Overall, number one, let it be known that Martina Rosenberg is a genius. She's a genius. And I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding about that. The fact that she could design something so elaborate, sparkly, beautiful, multidimensional, using all these different materials blows my mind. And As far as I'm concerned, she was really one of a kind, and um, I so admire her legacy of pure art. Uh, number two, I don't regret doing this project at all. It's gorgeous, and I think that anybody could do one of these. I think sometimes we like to add, like, act like there's some sort of mystique about doing certain things. This is just like a human quality. And I'm just here to say there's no mystique. It's just cross stitch. Okay, so I wrote down all my reflections on this jumbled up piece of paper and we're just going to go through them. This is going to be kind of random. I'm sorry. My tip number one for Chatelaine stitching. These aren't all tips. My note number one is that this saved me so much frustration. These are all the colors that are charted over one in my graph. And I think this would be very useful for any Chatelaine project. Make one of these project cards. All I did was enlarge the color key and then print it out on cardstock and punch a bunch of holes. Because there are areas of the chart like this horrible snail that you have to stitch four times. That horrible snail has about 20 colors in it three stitches, two stitches, three stitches. Like, it's so much tying off. It's incredible. It's, it's, it's outrageous. And um, one of those snails took me about an hour. <laughs> Life choices. Um, when you're having to get DMC off of a bobbin to do three stitches over one, on a horrible snail. This this made it so much easier. That's probably the most useful tip in this entire video. Speaking of the horrible snail, I did struggle sometimes with the chart being overly complicated because to be honest, that snail did not need to have 20 colors in it. It didn't. Like it really didn't you would stitch three different reds and you could not tell that there were three different reds in that dumb snail. And so I don't even remember which one I stitched first, but I started kind of simplifying um, because you cannot tell. You cannot tell. <laughs> and um, it's okay. Uh, there were parts of the chart that I struggled over, like why is it charted? Why is it charted like this? But you work around it. It's okay. Martina was still a genius. Uh, other parts of the chart, I struggled with what thread was, was in the chart and thinking it was wrong. And the primary example of that 
would be the grasshopper if I can find him. There's two of these grasshoppers on op opposite corners and he's over one and he was charted with pearl cotton. Say what? The first grasshopper I did, I was like, pearl cotton? Over one? Are you serious? And I thought, well, she's a genius. Better do it. And <laughs> no, <laughs> it should not have been pearl cotton. It was wrong. There, I mean, like any other cross-stitch chart, there are errors. However, if you go to the Chalet Gallery, the people, people have contributed what they have found um, in the chart, and they, you can write it down on your own and avoid those kinds of frustrations. Um, for example, on my chart, there is a color missing in the color key. That's extremely useful information, and so I would definitely recommend checking out that site and looking up your specific chart to find uh, the official errors that you need to fix. The supply list is wrong. And that's a huge one. And um, I'm just talking about mushroom and fern. I have no idea about the supply list for the other chatelaines. I don't know what kind of calculations Martina was doing um, specifically with the metallics and some of the carded specialty flosses, uh, like the silk pearl that I showed you. Um, I told you I, I bought some of those specialty fibers because I didn't know what they were. I thought, well, maybe they're really essential to the texture or whatever. And uh, I have a lot left over. Um, then I looked at the metallics and I know the metallics are way off. Um, I'm talking about the Petite Treasure Braid. Uh, a couple colors like she calls for four or five and I definitely never used even uh, over two cards of those metallics. And so my heart hurts for anybody who would just go kit up the entire Chatelaine right away. And then you end up with three extra cards of Silk Pearl <laughs> that you want to start a fire with. Uh, the calculations are off. I don't know what to say. I mean, it, it could potentially be a super frustrating problem. I would be super frustrated if I had spent literally over $50 just on Treasure Braid and then I had like eight cards left over. Um, yeah, I really wish I would have taken better notes on how much I ended up using because that would be useful information, but I didn't. Um, another it's just another way to say if you want to kit it up yourself, I'd go slow and just get a feel for the project, get a feel for where the fibers go and how much you are actually going to need of them. The PDF. So I mentioned that I purchased the PDF version of the chart. <laughs> this chart is huge and it's on four pages, as in the PDF, the actual chart of the pattern is all shoved on four pages. Now that is not a problem whatsoever for people who stitch off a tablet, right? You don't care where the page breaks are. I stitch off paper. <laughs> and so it required a little bit of technical knowledge because you cannot print out those four pages, they look like gobbledygook. I mean, because it's like, oh, it's way too many stitches going on on one page. It wouldn't even print out correctly. You have to know how to specifically take a snapshot of certain areas of the chart and print out your own pages, which, okay, it's not that hard. But was it a pain? Yes. Did I enjoy doing it? No. Just something to be aware of.
One of the challenges with this piece was the repeats, and I chose this piece specifically because it is not the same on all four, size, five, four sides. Uh, she does have a lot of patterns that are pretty much the same, or there's only slight variations um, across the mandala. So you're stitching the same thing repeatedly. And the bigger the mandala is, the more layers it has, that outer ring has more repeats than the ring before it. Um, so you can see I had to stitch eight trees. I had to stitch four of these border squares. Um, and that was why this project took me so long. I, I genuinely enjoyed stitching on it. I genuinely got sick of stitching these trees. They're big. And I'm not a person that enjoys stitching the same thing over and over again. And so I would say if the Manda, if you know that about yourself, you gotta pick one that has at least some variation uh, to keep you interested, because um, it can be a struggle. Um, another challenge is making judgment calls, like I just said before, where the chart can be confusing. Um, the fibers can be frustrating, and so I think you start you start questioning yourself. Um, should I change this? What should I do? Uh, that's challenging and doesn't feel fun at the time. Um, however, I think like I get up into the details, like I get too far up into the details because. At no point am I going to walk by this and go, I should have used, I should have used this different green there. At no point. And I'm the one that knows this the most intimately. <laughs> it's fine. Specialty stitches. Okay, so this is another area where the charts are weak. Uh, the specialty stitch diagrams are horrible. They're horrible. Um, and so it is a struggle to approach those specialty stitches, especially if you've never done them before. However, I would not let that, I would not let that stop you because there are other resources that you can use to figure out how to do a Jessica stitch, to figure out how to do, um, the different things that she calls for. Uh... And it's okay. Like, I started in the middle, and my Jessica stitches, I know for a fact, uh, the first ones that I did are so tiny that the camera won't even focus on them. They're in this layer right here, and I didn't do them completely. Like, I wasn't doing it right. And, but they, they sort of look right. And I didn't figure out until later on when there's bigger Jessica stitches that I wasn't actually completing the whole circle. It's okay. There's other diagrams out there you can look at. There's YouTube videos. It'll be okay. And it's, it is fun. I'll say that. It's fun. Give it a whirl. Uh, Martina and her diagrams are not going to be much help, but you can figure it out. It'll be fine. Uh, I did decide to make some changes to Martina's charting, but just tiny ones. Uh, the spider, technically, there are two spiders under each tree, and I forget what the official position of them. So they're all supposed to be right here in between these two branches. Um, I thought that was kind of boring. So I started putting the spider in different spots. That's a, that is such a minuscule change. Uh, I'm going to link down below if you're super interested in mushroom, mushroom and fern mandala. Um, my friend Sunshine EV, I, I will link her channel, channel down below. She's also stitching it and she's making huge changes. She has a beehive. She has a poison dart frog. Uh, she's being super adventurous and I really admire that about about her project so 
So the last detail is that I used my PVC lap stand to stitch this project. Uh, you can find that lap stand uh, down below. It is super cheap and I stitched this giant thing on it and it worked fine. Um, it didn't crush my stitches. It, it was great. For the beading, um, I didn't want to put the Q-snap hoops over beads or it was just going to be way too complicated and so I used an old scroll frame that I didn't really enjoy but got the job done. It was my first beading experience, and beading is not hard. It's not hard. There's nothing mysterious about it. I will say, it takes longer than cross stitch. <laughs> it takes way longer than cross stitch. So if you're interested in doing any sort of Chatelaine and you would like to connect with other stitchers, I really recommend um, going on the Chatelaine Gallery site and looking at other people's projects. I also recommend getting with that Facebook group because that Facebook group has stitchers in it that have already done your project. And so they already know the challenges of what in the world is going on with this stitch diagram and how did you figure out how to do this or that? Hey, what color did you use here? They're super helpful and encouraging and I hope that I've made this whole subject a little more approachable, maybe more tempting. Why not? Uh, go out of your comfort zone. Do something, do something crazy, wacky, new. We only live once. So cliche. That is all I have for you today covering my Chatelaine experience. I am going to take this to my most local needlework store, House of Stitches, and get it framed sometime soon, which was the motivation behind doing this. I wanted to be able to get some footage without it framed and um, glass over it to protect it from the wandering hooligans who live in my house. Um, thank you for all your encouragement through this this project, it was a lot of fun, and I do encourage you to branch out, do something fun and crazy with your stitching, because every time we do something new, it's good for our brains and our spirits, I think. So thank you for joining me. Make sure you like this video, and I would love if you would leave a comment. What do you think? Have you stitched a Chatelaine before? Uh, are you interested in one? Do you own one but haven't started it? Um, if you've done one, I'd love to know if your experience was similar or different than mine. That would be really interesting. So thanks for joining me for this stitchy chat. I will see you later, friends. Bye.